Hey folks, this is Mel Zabecki at the Coordinating Office of the Arkansas Archaeological Survey in Fayetteville. All the videos that Michelle has been making for y'all about all the lab things that she does have been really awesome and you've learned so many things about the different kinds of artifacts that archaeologists encounter and also how we go about analyzing and interpreting them. And today I want to tell you about one of my favorite kinds of artifacts, which is animal bones. Now, animal bones can tell us a lot about the diet of the people that we're studying and also a little bit about the environment. So did you know that we wouldn't find any armadillo bones from more than 100 or 200 or even 300 or 400 years ago? Because armadillos didn't actually arrive in Arkansas until about 70 years ago. So we can tell a little bit about the stratigraphy and maybe if something was messed up in the past by having armadillo bones mixed in. So that means that there's been disturbance in the ground. But also really what we want to focus on is what people People used to eat and what kinds of cuts they liked and you can tell all kinds of things from the different animal bones that we find in the ground. Now a lot of the time we actually bring faunal analysts into the picture to help us write the story. They are experts in animal bones and know how to identify all the different fauna that existed back then. And sometimes we don't really have time to have somebody look that thoroughly into it or we're just doing a preliminary report and we just want to know the real basics of what kinds of animals were around. And the way that we do that when we don't actually have our experts right at our fingertips is that we a lot of the time have comparative collections of most of the different fauna that would have been found uh, you know, in whatever time period we're looking at. So a lot of archaeologists actually have boxes of skeletonized animals. And sometimes you can buy a skeletonized animal from a biological supply company, but those are very expensive. So what a lot of archaeologists resort to is making their own comparative collections, which is sometimes a really stinky process. So today I'm here to show you our way of making a comparative collection with different animals by introducing you to the survey's Dermested Beetle Colony. So a little bit about Dermested Beetles. Um, they are flesh-eating beetles. And uh, they're not something to be taken lightly because if they escape, they could really make a mess of eating all kinds of textiles and paper and stuff like that. So if you ever think about keeping them, it's something that you really have to look into and do some research on and find a really good place to put them. Uh, another thing about keeping dermestids is that they're very specific in terms of their environment and climate and moisture content as far as what kind of environment they thrive in. And so you have to find a spot that actually stays some somewhere between 60 and 75 degrees. You don't want to go above 75 degrees because if they get to 80 degrees, somehow they form wings and they start flying around. So you never want to get above 80 degrees. So we've, we've found a, a place in our Arkansas Archaeological Survey um, complex in the building that um, Mary Souter, Dr. Mary Souter at the museum actually gave me some lab space. It's a very teeny tiny room, but we keep their domestics in a tank, which is right behind me, and I'll show you them in just a little bit. Um, but what we do is we get animals from different places, whether it be Arkansas Game and Fish Commission donates animals to us sometimes. Uh, and sometimes Sometimes you can collect them off the road so you have to have a special permit through game and fish to be able to collect different kinds of animals and uh, you also have to be very aware of which kinds of animals you can collect because there are some endangered species and a lot of the birds and stuff you can't do unless you have a permit so this is not something that you just go out and do very easily um, but it is something that's very very useful because it will uh, result in getting some really great co comparative collections that our archaeologists can use so first I'm going to show you just the leg uh, that we've gotten done um, and that's just all skeletonized and it's a bobcat leg. And then I'll show you what's in the tank. So there's a few bugs still left on the bobcat leg, but I want to show you how clean they get these things. So this started out as a, a leg that was um, covered in muscle. We had already removed the flesh and the large parts of muscle, but there was still a lot of uh, muscle clinging to it and a lot of tendon. And in about a week and a half, the bugs cleaned it off. So let's flip the camera. And here we have a bobcat leg. And there's still a couple of bugs walking around on it, but they're kind of shy when it comes to light. So most of them have actually gone underneath the leg. Let's see if I can flip it over and you might see some underneath. They don't move. Oh, there's an adult one. And then you see all these little teeny tiny ones. Those are all the, got to flip it over. Sad. It'll flip over eventually. There we go. Um, so these little teeny tiny ones are the larvae that do most of the work and they go through eight instars. So they go from really teeny tiny to little tiny 
I'm trying to look for a really tiny one, but I can't find, there might be one right there. That little speck is a little teeny tiny one. And then they get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until they turn into adults, okay? So uh, they do all the cleaning. And what's gonna happen with this one next is I'll put it in a crock pot with some gain detergent. And that'll clean off all the rest of the little bit of, um, not flesh, but just a little bit of the staining, a little bit of the grease, okay? So that'll that'll be the next step in that one. Uh, I'm going to bring you over to the tank, though, and you can see the whole bobcat that they just did. <laughs> the legs were done separately, and I don't know how high I can get this camera, but there's a whole bobcat in there without its legs. So we're able to get the whole thing cleaned off, and, and there's a lot of the bugs. You know, the main colony is in there, and they've cleaned it down almost done. But you see this, this part right here? They're still working on it because there's still some flesh left at the bottom of the pelvis. And then actually this mess over here are some mink legs that I put in there about a week ago. So this bobcat work has been worked on for about a month and they got it down to all skeleton. And again, that'll go into a crock pot that will eventually get all nice and cleaned off so that our archeologists can use the bobcat bones for comparative collection. So the rest of what's going on in this tank, you see these styrofoam pieces, they're just random styrofoam that we had and the bugs actually pupate in these styrofoam. So this is a new one and that's, those are relatively old ones from about two months ago. So once those get really, really completely spongy, like now, I'll probably try to hide them, put, put them up a little bit so that the bugs fall down so I don't throw out any bugs. But that's a new one that they'll be working on. So they're starting to get in there and, and the larva will pupate. But and there's also, uh, just for more information, there's some uh, wood chips and that's what their main bedding is. And then also all these paper towels will eventually, uh, when I leave today, I'll put them on top of the bobcat and put a little bit of water on them because they really like moisture. So also I'll turn the lights off as soon as I leave because the bugs like to work in the dark. So I hope that was an ing bit of information for you. We will be doing some GoPro time-lapse photos with some of the other animals we'll be putting in. And hopefully I'll be able to put those either on our YouTube page or somewhere in the comments. So stay in touch for those. Um, it'll be probably a couple of weeks before we get that footage done. But anyway, if you have any questions, Get in touch with me at mzabeck at uark.edu. And uh, thanks for watching. Take care.